Good morning. Good morning, Good morning everyone. Good morning. Good mic check, Duffy. <laughs> oh. Good evening. I'm, I'm, I'm only ever 50% sure it's going to work, so. We'll give folks a few more minutes. Amy, do we want to wait another minute? Nope. We've got about 20 folks coming on in, so we are ready to get started. All right. Let's go ahead and get started then. Good morning, everyone. Good day. Thank you so much for joining this public POC meeting. As a reminder, we are all subject to the LF antitrust policy notice. Um, meeting logistics, if you're here, you figured out where, where the meeting is. Next. And we have several TOC members here present today. As a quick reminder, this is a public meeting, so we are welcoming community members' feedback. Um, we're going to be talking today about the approach to inactive CNCF projects. Um, there is an open issue on our repo. Thank you so much, Dawn, for filing this so we can have this discussion today. Um, so for those of you that are haven't been following some of the TOC dialogue as of as of recent, um, we've been asking a lot more around a, a lot of questions around project health, their status, checking in with them because the current process says that we have annual reviews for sandbox projects, but we don't have the equivalent for incubating and graduated. And as projects move between levels, they experience a lot of changes. Um, some of them take off; they see widespread rampant adoption, and then in other cases. Some of them don't. Um, so what do we do with projects that reach an inactive state? It could be any number of reasons. Uh, maintainers could have taken some time off to go deal with some personal matters or change companies or organizations, um, but we might expect them to come back. So I wanted to open the floor to the discussion. We've got some initial questions here that I think can help drive the conversation a little bit in this space. So I wanted to first make everyone aware that we do have several dashboards that exist um, that the foundation puts together for us um, that from dev stats we also have a project health table that lets us know um, kind of like what are the most recent commits of a project how long has it been since they've had them but these are not always good indicators of a project's activity there could be things that are going on outside of the actual git commits and the repos so i'm gonna silence myself real quick and kind of like open the floor for discussion. If you have something that you would like to mention, come off mute, raise your hand. We'll try to do a good job of making sure everyone has the opportunity to speak. Okay. Uh, Richie. Yes. So two thoughts at the same time. Uh, on the one hand, I want to lead in with that I know that certain projects don't have to have a lot of GitHub or other uh, visibility. Open metrics is the obvious is the obvious uh, example there. As a standard, there is it, it would actually be a bad thing if there was activity all the time. It's actually a good thing that there are long pauses in activity in 
because again, um, with that out of the way, um, I do think that we as CNCF would benefit from from being a little bit more assertive in 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 ascertaining the the uh, ba basically continued development of projects because I feel historically we we have been very um, inviting to pretty much everything and everyone uh, and it it just adds overhead in a lot of places and part of the burden we as TOC are feeling is. Uh, a lot of projects to to handle and and being a little bit more assertive about both allowing projects and archiving projects it would be good. Thanks, Reggie. Josh, <clears throat> have we discussed um, having incubating graduated projects do annual reports if they haven't had a due diligence this year? We have talked about that, not in relation to this issue, but as a result of other conversations and challenges that come up. So I, I believe, and any TOC member, please correct me, um, I think we're all relatively in favor of annual reviews for incubating and graduating projects. However, we want to ensure that we're not increasing the amount of burden on reporting coming from the project. So identifying which portions of an annual report are indicators of change on a project in an automated way as much as possible, where those engagements with the project to check on their status are slightly lighter weight, whether or not that's a TOC member checking in with them after we receive an automated annual report or annual review from them, or perhaps extending that capability to the tags to check in with those projects and leverage that report as a functional functional driving point in conversation around some of those activities. Yeah, I mean, I was just thinking about annual reports both as a way to um, uh, you know, indicate activity, uh, particularly in the case of projects where um, a constant stream of commits is not the best gauge of activity. Um, the second thing is also annual reports is a chance to check in on potentially other looming project problems. Um, like, for example, an exodus of maintainers, which we've had as an issue with a couple of projects. Um, uh, the, um, it's just we have a lot of projects now and <laughs> keeping track of all of them by a dashboard um, is would be challenging even with the best dashboard in the world. Um, and we haven't yet figured out what the best dashboard in the world looks like. Yep, I agree. Richie? Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's maybe weird for me considering where I work, but yes, I fully agree. Uh, just having a dashboard is not going to be super effective because it's a case of putting expensive humans in front of a screen. Uh, automated reports, alerts and such would be much better. I, with my project hat on or two different project hats on A, I fully agree with Emily that this must be automated as much as possible. And only if certain if certain things are not being met, should we even actively reach out and really uh, introduce much of a process because most of the projects are really resource and time strapped already uh, and putting more burden on them is, is not precisely why you as a project join an umbrella. Uh, the other thing is um, tracking will not be always possible. Like with my open telemetry hat on, it's 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 very hard to track relevant contributions which happen in other places and are still relevant for the project. And this is also true for the for the life speed of a given project. So we can never fully automate all of this, but we should as much as we can. Yep, I agree. So. I, Richie, you, you mentioned something that's interesting, and I, I would like to kind of tease this out because um, we've we've had a recent discussion around this. Is when things are not being met. So right now, the criteria for archiving projects is more or less kind of clear. Um, it basically states that it the project has to continue to meet the criteria for CNCF acceptance, and the criteria changes depending on what level it is that you're looking at. For the most part, we see projects that come in at the sandbox level. We have some criteria that is already defined, but it's not very robust. And when the TOC is evaluating projects for sandbox inclusion, we cover, we look at a lot of different things. We, we look at how many maintainers they have, how active they are, what kind of documentation exists 
What plans do they have for the project? What's the direction that they're heading in? And those projects provide us with a lot of information about what's going on with them so that we can help make those decisions. Um, but for incubating projects, that criteria looks a little different. Projects need to be ready and what's ready for one project doesn't look the same as another. We go through the due diligence process. We do have criteria that are defined at the incubation level. So my question is, is the criteria that we have for archival enough of a low bar for determining whether or not we need to re-engage with projects if they come up as inactive? And how could we potentially programmatically identify indicators that would allow us to have that conversation? Because I don't believe, based off of the criteria that we have, we can do that today. I think there is there is at least three and a half substrands in, in answers to, to that question. Maybe on the high level first, um, I personally believe that yes, there should be more scrutiny on, let's say, a graduated project than uh, than a sandbox project, due to the simple fact that it is uh, people are more likely to trust it, so there's also more more risk of sorts in if that thing goes stale. Um, I lost part of the track of the, um, but as you asked me directly. Um, at the latest, when we trigger whatever mechanisms or whatever threshold we, we have, we, we must be engaging with the project, but that's like a kind of tautologic anyway, uh, but we should give them a fair warning uh, before we do so, and at least like ask about the health of the project and things like these. Yep. And I forgot the rest, sorry. It's all right. No worries. Yeah. Um, we for the archiving we we've talked about making sure that that process is a little bit more clear and and to your point specifically engaging with the project to kind of understand first what's going on um see if there's something that we're not aware of that we haven't considered perhaps they are um, holding regular meetings to kind of figure out what their long-term planning and roadmap actually looks like and they might have paused to work on the project until they they've gotten a clearer vision and that, that's entirely reasonable and that's something we can learn when we re-engage with them. Um, but generally speaking, we want to ensure that projects have the opportunity to let us know what's going on. But I want to ensure that they also feel empowered to reach out to TAGS or TOC members if they're struggling. Josh, is your hand still up? Or do you have something to add? I mean, I do have something to add, but it kind of takes us in a different direction. So let me okay. wait for other people who have more to say on that current point. Okay, Ricardo. Yeah, I just had a quick question on the second bullet uh, in this slide, which is uh, about health and activity of a project. We we're talking about archival. Um, is this uh, also counting on uh, kind of demoting a project? Uh, or do we expect it to move to archival and then come back if it becomes active again? Or are we considering like uh, incubation back to sandbox or graduation back to incubation, things like this? That is an excellent question. And I don't know that we've actually talked about that or had that presented as um, a potential alternative. Richie, your hand is up. Craig, so I'm going to... Let's do Richie and then Craig. I'm pretty certain TOC has never discussed this. I know I was in several discussions about precisely this topic, about like demoting projects and having a way back. Um, we always came out at A, this being super confusing for end users, this back and forth. And also um, about this, like if, if you are graduated and you you're idly enough to need a warning um it should be a a strong warning and not basically a a soft cushion of oh i can basically um just as soon as i ramp back up everything will be fine and dandy i think there should be more of a more of a cliff to honestly keep people motivated at that point where things are already pressing it also makes it easier internally uh like if, if you are working at a company which used to sponsor something and you're being told, hey, this might fall off of a cliff, you have a much easier time internally to argue for resources and everything. Craig? There was a comment that I'd put on one of the issues when you were talking about adding more requirements to graduation. And I think it was more like, let's say that there needs to be a, 
current diversity of maintainers. In the event that the project otherwise stayed the same in terms of adoption and no longer had that diversity, it technically wouldn't meet the criteria, but because it had at some point in the past, it would remain in that bucket. And so that had come up in the context of annual reviews, but I've floated a broader idea, which is what if there were just CNCF projects and then there were tags in the Kubernetes label sense rather than the tag sense applied to them that said this project is diverse maintainership, this project has a security badge and so on. Because right now there is such a requirement from maintainers and companies and so on to move in a one-way process through this graduation thing, but it's not necessarily always going to be true that they meet all of the requirements. And Richie, to what you were saying there, like there will be times where a graduated project, it's not going to need archival, it won't want archival, but it may no longer meet the requirements that otherwise a graduated project would be set out. And so its options effectively are to demote it back to incubation, which requires a huge effort then if it ever meets those requirements again, or just have an approach whereby you can say, all right, it's, it's all these things, but it's currently inactive or it, it currently doesn't meet this requirement. And it makes it a bit more, uh, fine grained as to what the parameters are for a project. So I think badging is, is an interesting concept. The motion I think is also, however, I want to ensure that we understand what the value of doing that would be for a project, because there is a lot of benefits and value that projects get at certain levels from the foundation and the motion would be a change in what is available to them. Um, particularly moving from incubation to sandbox. But if a project is already in sandbox, the only other alternative would be to archive them at that point, because there is no demotion other than moving them out. Um, I think badging is very interesting. Um, it allows us to provide better visibility and transparency to potential adopters around the state of the project. There may be some adopters that don't necessarily way maintainer diversity is very high. They just want to ensure that it's active and it's moving forward. For us in the TUC, we we want to ensure that the project has enough maintainership, both in that um, they can coll collectively and collaboratively drive the direction forward so that there is no single entity that can change the direction of the project on their own. And that's kind of defined in governance and we allow projects to do that, to set those limitations for themselves. But we also wanna ensure that if something were to happen, um, if maintainers want to take a vacation, because everybody would love to take a vacation in open source, that they can do so and step away and the project can still kind of move forward for an extended amount of time. Um, and they can still receive commits and that they're not relying on a single person or two or three individuals to carry the entire weight of its progress moving forward. So I think between badging, I think there are some elements there that are useful. I think the annual report concept is excellent, but what would we consider kind of like health and activity for those? All right, uh, Don and then Josh, I think I got that order right. Yeah, I mean, I okay, think me, one of the things we should talk, talk about with respect to archiving projects in particular is um, security vulnerability. So this is this is one of the things that we focus on before we archive projects at VMware, for example, is if the project has a bunch of open security alerts that they're not fixing and not releasing fixes for, then we look at whether a project should be archived. So I think that the um, the security status of a project is, is pretty important because what we don't want okay, are projects David, you, David, that are sitting out there with loads of open security vulnerabilities as a CNCF incubating your graduated project and never release the fixes for those because that doesn't reflect well on yeah, any of us. Yeah, so I think that's at least one element that we need to think about. Thanks, Don. So I want to make sure that I heard because there was some background noise that was coming in. Um, the security Sorry, vulnerability. Be very loud talking next to me. Ah, okay. Um, so to make sure I understood correctly, the your consideration for security activity associated with the project, their ability to make sure that all their dependencies are up to date, that they're resolving any active vulnerabilities that are reported to them, and that they have a good response window. Is that did I understand that correctly as a consideration? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay, thanks. I think that is definitely, <laughs> that hits home for me. Josh? Yeah, so um, since we started talking about what demotion would mean, I think we need to 
really look very differently at incubating and sandbox projects than we do at graduated projects. Um, I feel like for graduated projects, the CNCF has an obligation to um, uh, to our users, um, to the users and stuff, to try to keep graduated projects um, stable and current and available. Um, you know, unless they are sort of naturally obsolescent, if you follow me. Like if people have stopped using them, then yeah, sure, let's talk about archiving them. Um, but as long as there's a user base that depends on that graduated project, and you don't generally get to graduate unless there is one, um, I, that um, the first effort of the CNCF at the graduated level needs to be, um, how can we rescue this project, not demoting it to incubate it. I, I think that should be a truly exceptional um, turn of events for that. Um, on the other hand, going from, you know, for a project going from incubated to sandbox, I think that is something that, that we could talk about uh, because it is after all incubating um, and, and that's kind of a possibility. Okay. Um, Adam had asked in chat, what is the criteria for making a project inactive and looking at the DevStats dashboard, there are five projects that are currently inactive, which is fairly accurate. Um, it's essentially, as Amy stated, anything that hasn't had activity for 120 days. But that again, that's looking purely at GitHub and Git commits. Um, it's not always a strong indicator. I was spending some time this morning actually looking at one of those to try to understand what's going on with the project. And we do lose a lot of history when we're relying solely on Git and Git versioning and all those commits that have been happening over time. So we need a better indicator there. Um, Richie? I, I would phrase it maybe a little bit differently. Um, I think having X amount of time and 120 days seems good um, as one of the possible triggers for deeper scrutiny is, is probably a reliable approach. Not as the sole trigger, but basically if you if you do not meet X amount of metrics or if you do meet X amount of metrics, that's when, or a mix of, of positive and negative statements, um, is when, when we trigger a more manual approach, which would initially probably be TUC and or tags reaching out and just saying, hey, are you okay? Um, but if someone has plenty of activity and, and contribution graphs are, are always stable over years and everything, or even growing, maybe we, we can just not have a deeper review of, of that project. I mean, Kubernetes, we all agree probably we don't need to do an in-depth analysis on if the project is going to go away next week or Prometheus or whatever. Like, we know we don't have to. Okay. Um, there was some discussion in chat. Uh, Don identified that open metrics is a standard. And we've talked in the past about how um, depending on what kind of project it is, if it's a standard or not, their activity is going to look very different. So that might be an occasion where having badging or some other labeling associated with project is a enough of a good indicator that this one might be fine, but we should still look. Um, Craig also followed up in chat with when external parties or adopters or other entities who are not the maintainers of our project are seeking to have a project marked and active, but the maintainers don't. And there are probably occasions where, and it's not just this particular case, where the maintainers just are moving at a different pace than what we're, we're used to seeing. And this, for me, I would expect the tag or the TOC to re-engage with the project, to talk to the maintainers, because the, they're the ones that are responsible for owning the commits and moving the project forward and engaging with them to understand kind of where they're headed, regardless of any of the external factors. But then that kind of brings us back to the discussion of what is considered healthy and active? What sorts of indicators do we have in place for that? Um, Ricardo asked around having an annual report be a requirement for graduated projects. I think that is still on the table here. What other thoughts do folks have? Because I'm hearing a lot of very good ideas, but we haven't actually talked about what some of those indicators are. We're talking more around the process and that's fine, but I'm, I'm curious for individuals that are maintainers or have been, been involved in the maintenance of projects, how do you view your own activity and health?
Do we have any maintainers on the call? That's a good question. Yeah. Yes, okay. and I've been quiet and thinking. There's lots of maintainers here. So does, some, does a different maintainer besides me uh, have thoughts on this? I mean, we. I would say that, like for the most part, looking at the health of a project, I would under. I would look to understand issues and resolution of those issues. I'd look to understand releases. Um, like, are we actually moving those mo moving those issues or things that are found in the project toward a release and releasing things that are fixed? These are the things that I usually um, judge the health of a project on. I, yeah, I would also say it has to do with. Um, where the the maintainers are in managing their future, right? It's one thing to manage for the code, but you have to wonder who's coming behind you. Because as I look at the CNCF over time, if I go back four and five years and I look at who maintainers are uh, in general now versus back then, you'll see some people who are the same, but you're going to see a lot of transition. And so how do they... For example, manage that transition and change. Um, in addition to how are they managing their backlog? And, and some things you're going to get more issues and stuff coming in than you're ever going to be able to react to. Um, look at Kubernetes. And actually, I'll echo Don's statement about another another health metric is the security impact, right? It's like if somebody opens a security issue or if they're dealing with some kind of a a way of dealing with security issues that's also an indicator of health because it usually comes after the project is actually already in a in a reasonable in a reasonable place for the most part <laughs> having a security response mechanism is really important uh kathy and then i have a comment yeah I, yeah i i think actually uh i think uh, ricardo raised a question whether we would like the project to have annual report Actually, I think that's a good idea. You know, and if the annual report can include some indicators, health indicators of the project, right? Um, you know, like security vulnerabilities, which was raised, you know, um, by Dawn before, and also some like, you know, um, the activity level, yeah, maintainers, etc. And then, you know, uh, if we, if that report, we, you know, we see some, um, some issues, um, I think uh, it's better to combine that with uh, annual review or, or we can have a, I think it's, it, we need to give a chance for the project maintainers to explain, you know, um, like, you know, if we see some issues, why those issues, and then we can decide uh, what to do. I also agree with John's comment on, um, you know, we need to treat the graduate, graduated project um, differently than sandbox or incubating. Um, because once we approve those projects to be a graduated project, I think, you know, there will be quite some users using it. So uh, we need to put in extra, um, I think, care and effort to make sure those projects uh, should not go to the archi archive, uh, you know, that status. Mm -hmm. um, there was also a question in chat around whether or not how long it takes to reviews and close out PRs or issues is a good indicator. Um, from a recent discussion I had with one of the companies that does security audits for projects, it's not always a good indicator of activity. There are some vulnerabilities or design flaws that do exist within projects that just take an extremely long amount of time to get resolved and require a lot of individuals involvement. So leveraging kind of the time that a PR has been open isn't always a good indicator. Same thing with issues. Um, it could also be that the project set their roadmap and they're going to work on those issues that are defined underneath of their milestones first and foremost, because um, it's entirely up to them to prioritize what work it is that they would like to do. Nikita had a good suggestion or um, observation around what Kubernetes currently does and potentially re-leveraging some of that prior art. I like the idea of a maintenance mode for projects that are, they've kind of capped 
on the amount of uh, voracious activity that's going on within the project. And so we, we will see kind of activity start to stabilize. So having maybe a badge associated with maintenance mode for projects is also a good indicator to help reduce the amount of potential false positives that come up in an annual report. Um, Ricardo had a good suggestion on coming up with indicators for each level. Yep, I think we, we're going to we're going to go down that path as well as looking at automating the detection of those indicators. So I think I think we're on agreement around that one. Josh added around metrics or what triggers the TOC member investigating. I think that's still up for discussion. OK, so still need to get into the specifics and I think we can probably do that maybe offline or if we have time later on the next question that I have for everyone here is who is this information going to be for and who's responsible for doing something about it so I think we have a culmination of a lot of really good ideas that need to be pulled together into like some different options that we can start exploring but I want to know who so in addition to the TOC looking at the the activity of projects what about tags? What about other maintainers? What, are, what about adopters? They're going to be looking for different sets of information. Richie? Uh, three points so far to, uh, for who I think TOC and project maintainers primarily, uh, maybe also tag uh, tags. The who does it, I somewhat strongly believe CNCF uh, staff. Uh, the reason why I believe this and why I don't think this is something which, which should be at least led by the text. As the unfortunate one who did three full due diligences as part of a little bit of a test balloon within type observability, um, there is a lot of strong opinions and a lot of politics and sometimes even perf and promotions and raises and everything attached to project status, to, to moving levels and in particular to being removed, I would dare say. Um, I don't think it is realistic to, to expect uh, all tags acting completely the same. And as such, you will have some element of tag shopping for the more lenient ones or the more aggressive ones and all of those things. I don't think it is healthy and I don't think it's fair to, to offload all of this onto the tags. At least unless it is supportive slash administrative, in which case I somewhat strongly believe CNCF staff would be better suited. Okay. And to ensure comment on that is captured, Craig had mentioned that that very point around there's a lot that's tied into moving levels that impact a lot of people's livelihoods and their abilities. Um, that's why he had suggested removing them or at least having a conversation, but that's scheduled for the fall. That's a, another discussion for another time. Uh, Ricardo. So I was just adding that this should be for adopters and end users. Uh, I think this information is very, very useful. I had a question for Craig, which was uh, if he was suggesting to add badges in addition to the maturity levels or just drop in the levels completely, but he already answered in the chat. And um, the concern there, we should also ask end users what they're using these maturity levels for, because it's kind of a stamp on the project and it's quite kind of useful to have these levels right now if we have a lot of indicators uh, like browsing through the project might be a bit more complicated um, so yeah maybe maybe we need to to ask the end users as well what they what they see the benefit of the levels um, and adding badges what it could bring i think it's a great idea but yeah definitely has value for end users the current levels right now yep and i think that's a that is a worthwhile conversation to have in that working group that we've requested out of tag contributor strategy so if you're interested in the moving levels discussion and how potentially that could be changed and shifted um, to provide a more healthy ecosystem for all of our projects and a positive experience for all of our project adopters and tags as well um, Please check out that if someone has it handy, I'd appreciate you dropping it in the chat for everyone to follow up on. Um, so I'm hearing that badging has a potential value add here for understanding what's currently going on with projects. Hearing definitely a yes to an annual reporting mechanism that needs to be driven by 
the current level that a project exists in, whether or not it's sandbox incubation or graduation. And that graduated projects definitely need to be treated different. And I think uh, Josh's point that it should be a rescue effort for them is, is pretty spot on. And that's kind of the behavior mechanism that the TOC um, has been following with some of these projects as we are alerted to them. But that is a reactionary mode. We need to be a little bit more pre proactive on some of those indicators. Um, so I think my next question for everyone is one, do you have any other observations or any other gotchas that we're not seeing here? And then two, what do we want to do next with this? We've had a lot of really good ideas. We need to start moving them together. Thanks Don for posting that in the chat. Um, how do we want to move forward? And I will provide a quick reminder to everyone that I understand that we are all busy, but if this is something we really care about, we do need an individual or several individuals to kind of step up and champion this work. Richie? I, as part of my TOC responsibility, I have a project which I'm, I'm a little bit doubtful about. Um, so it might lead to archival. So I'm also happy to to look at all the policies and and provide or do a PR and lead the public discussion. Okay, I've got Richie that's interested. Josh, um, what's the definition of the work? I mean, we've had a lot of discussion here, but I don't. I'm not actually clear on what the next steps are. Yep, uh, that's that's a good question and kind of driving a little bit more of the one that I I was trying to get at. So in my mind, the way that I see this right now is I've taken several notes. I have a Google Doc that I'm just consolidating things into and I will eventually clean it up and share it in the TOC channel for everyone to observe. Um, the next steps for me are taking all of the feedback and the discussion that we've had today, some of the suggestions and ideas and figuring out how they can work cohesively together. Um, once that is done, identifying what some of those indicators are and what's currently possible today with the tooling and the resources that are available to us, um, as well as potentially identifying any modifications to the existing tools, such as dev stats, visibility, kind of workflows, how this all is intended to work. And then from there, going through a public review and comment on whether or not the process that we're going to define here works, whether or not the indicators is also good. Um, that may require engaging with the end user and the, and the adopters to understand what they're looking for. It may require engaging with all of the tags to make sure that they are invested and in understand what their roles and responsibilities are in this process if we show, choose to define that for them. And also making it available and understand, uh, helping maintainers understand kind of what are their expectations for this? How do they go and view that information? This is not a small project. I'm happy to, to help on the end user part as well, to make sure that we get uh, feedback we need. Okay. So I've got Richie for kind of like the process and the policy bits. I've got Ricardo for end user engagement. Who's super passionate about indicators. We've got 24 folks on this call, and I know that there are a lot more individuals that couldn't make it. I mean, I'll be working with somebody on indicators, but okay. we need other people on this and, and ideally a TOC member who's interested yep. in that. Yep, I agree. So it's the definition of this just to look at the different indicators for the health of a project and figure out how to derive them from the project itself or like like what it, again i'm still struggling to understand like i feel like we need at least a version i need we we need at least another rendition of the document or the notes that you're putting together so that we can break this up into things that could be taken on because at the moment it feels like it feels pretty nebulous yep. to take on any part of it without having some structure mm -hmm. around it that's fair 
Is it come up with a list of indicators? Is that the, the task or? Sure, I mean, it's one of them. All right, so, so since we're kind of stalling on kind of what it is that can happen, um, we can start with Dawn's indicators as, as kind of the starting point. Um, what I can do is I will go through and I will type up all of my notes, come up with kind of an outline for what needs to happen and, and the individuals that are interested or have expressed interest in some of those areas. I will go ahead and tag them on the issue. Hopefully I have your GitHub handle because this will um, will modify this issue to keep track of this kind of activity. And Don, since you're the one that filed the issue, I want to make sure that I have your concurrence to modify it to reflect all of these changes. Yeah, please, absolutely. Okay. All right, so what I'll do is I'll take the action. I'll go ahead and write up the summary for what it is that we're looking to do, kind of the different project areas, what some of the suggestions have been around here. I'll tag the individuals that expressed interest on it, and I'll make sure that this is available in the TOC channel for anyone to stop by, as well as the tag chairs channel for any of the tag chair members um, that were unable to participate today. If you want to pair on working through that, I'm happy to do that part of it. That would be fantastic, Duffy. Thank you. I will take you up on that offer. And Ricardo, I see that you're happy to help provide feedback on the list of indicators for adding and removing. So I'll add you to that group as well. All right. Um, any other thoughts, opinions, perspectives on this? Okay. We've got a few more minutes left. Um, we don't have anything else on our agenda, so I will tentatively and cautiously open the floor up to any last minute questions that folks may have. Do we have, do we have an idea of how the badges thing would work? I'm actually kind of interested in understanding would that be, would we, would we think, or are we looking at like how that would integrate with tags and tags would associate, like if they pass a particular, set of criteria they would associate a badge with a project or like how are we how are we looking at that i think that is still yet to be determined okay i thought maybe, it sounded like maybe there was already some work there but i wasn't sure um craig is the one that had suggested the badging i believe yeah sorry when i said tag before i meant tag as in label as opposed to tag as in technical advisory group i wasn't ah. trying to associate those two things together gotcha as in, you may have more than one of them, whereas today you currently only have one label that says that you're participating. That makes sense, yeah. Okay. Um, Richie had another thought. Make them key value pairs, not one dimensional labels. Okay. All right, if there's nothing else, I will let everyone go. I really appreciate you all taking the time to join us in this discussion. Um, hopefully we can begin to move forward on it, uh, but I understand that I'm the roadblock for that right now. So I will take the time, go ahead and get this written up and work with Duffy. One other administrative note, um, we mm -hmm. are extending sandbox voting for another day to be able to make sure that we're capturing votes. Um, there's been some kind of some drift between where votes are actually going. So it'll be open through Wednesday. Cool. Okay. Like, come by and uh, look. If, if you've got any questions about that, happy to be able to help on that. But we're extending for another day just to make sure that we are capturing everything. Just a question: When is the next uh, sandbox uh, application review meeting? Probably like uh, June-ish. Okay. Um, I will. I will follow up with like with the, the more direct like notes for when those are coming up. So. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. We really appreciate your time today. We look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.